Hey guys, welcome to episode number 264. Today is Wednesday, so it's DIY Wednesday. And today, I don't have a project for you, but what I have are plans for two upcoming projects. I've ordered all of the parts, I have some of the parts in already, and uh, these two projects will be built this weekend, and then I will be releasing those videos here shortly. But what I wanted to do, since I teased it uh, on Monday, was explain to you my plans to build a redundant solenoid drip line, and also to build a float activated water alarm system. Um, as you might imagine, both of these projects uh, will come in very handy in the fish room and uh, they're both actually pretty low cost uh, solutions. So let me walk through the diagrams here starting with the, uh, the redundant solenoid drip line. What we're going to do first is uh, start with our wall uh, power and electrical socket and uh, we're going to use a 12 volt 5 amp uh, power adapter and the line from that is going to go into a normally closed float switch um, something like this, like a water water level, fluid level switch. It doesn't have to be very expensive uh, as long as that float goes up and down and it's, it's normally closed, which means that that circuit is normally connected. The circuit will be interrupted when the float switch comes up and opens the circuit. All right, so as long as the power is on and as long as the water level is low, there's going to be power going through this circuit and uh, then that will feed into um, two solenoid valves, uh, quarter inch solenoid valves and the power going to those valves is what's going to keep those um, solenoids open. Um, solenoids are basically uh, ball valves that are uh, operated by power and uh, when these two lose power, when this circuit is cut off, um, they will close. And the reason I have two of them is basically in case one of them decides to fail. Um, it's a very cheap way to kind of build in a, a fail safe. So we have the quarter inch drip line coming from my three stage carbon filter going through the solenoid valves and dripping into the tank. So this is the statement which kind of summarizes um, that diagram that we just looked at. Water will only drip when the power is on and when the water level is low. And the water level being low is a good thing because it's going to be in this barrel here um, and the primary line of defense is going to be that float activated sump pump. Um, so the water level should stay low in this barrel unless that pump fails for whatever reason uh, and the water level gets higher in this barrel for whatever reason this drip line will shut off <clears throat> and the reason I like this design is very simple uh, very straightforward very low cost and it accomplishes two things at once right with this statement um, if the power in the house goes off the circuit is going to be broken and the solenoids are going to shut, the drip line is going to stop. Or if the water level gets too high, the circuit is going to be broken, the solenoids shut off, and the drip line shuts off. So it accomplishes kind of two things in one, and it really makes this drip line um, something you can feel safe installing uh, in your aquarium or in your sump or in your fish room. Okay? Um, that's basically it. Uh, I believe these are like, you know, five or six dollars a piece. Um, these, again, they're like five dollars a piece. The solenoids are a little bit more expensive, depending on you know which ones you get. They might be ten dollars a piece, and uh, the drip line and the the uh, the wiring is is basically uh, free. So I mean, you're you're looking at about a twenty dollar solution here. Um, for something that's going to give you really good peace of mind uh, in the in the event that um, you know something does go wrong in the fish room, this is what's going to protect you um, from having a water event, and it could be a, a very significant water event 
if this is 40 gallons per day dripping in, that could be 40 gallons per day dripping onto the floor, uh, which could get bad pretty quick. Moving on to the next project is the float activated water alarm. Uh, they do sell water alarms that basically, it's like a smoke detector, and you can just throw it on the floor, and if it detects water, it will go off. Those are fine. I wanted to go with something a little bit more high-tech, something a little bit more precise, um, you know, something a little bit cooler as well. And it's going to start the same way. We've got our wall socket power, which is going into a 12-volt, 5-amp adapter, which is going to a normally open float switch. This float switch was normally closed, so the circuit was closed, right? Power was going through normally. This one is normally open, which means that circuit is normally broken. So power will not go through unless that float goes up. And that's actually the same case as um, you know a normal float switch, which goes on a float activated sump. Right now, this is normally open, and when that water level goes up, it will close the circuit and it will kick that pump on. Okay, so these are the ones that you see more commonly and uh, actually it's it's the same exact size looks exactly like this um, it's just the way that uh, you know it's it's wired on the inside um, which makes it different okay so we go from the normally open float switch into directly into a 12 volt strobe siren alarm <laughs> And uh, you, can, you can Google these. Uh, I'm, next week you'll be able to see one on my channel. Uh, they're really cool. They're actually meant to be put like above doors that aren't supposed to be opened. You know, if someone opens a door that they're not supposed to open, it kicks this thing on. And uh, it, it basically strobes a, a red light. Uh, and it also has a, an alarm siren noise at the same time. Um, and so essentially uh, what would happen and with this statement uh, the alarm will trip when the power is on and when the water level is high which is a bad thing remember it's going to be in here again so if the water level for whatever reason gets too high and the power is on to be able to power that alarm uh, that strobe siren is going to go off the whole basement will flash with red light and you'll hear an alarm just like you would hear you know a smoke detector alarm uh, so anyone in the house would be alerted that the water level in this tank or in this sump is dangerously high and that could happen for a number of reasons um, I could leave a hose on for whatever reason in one of these tanks and uh, this uh, sump pump might be broken or disconnected or, or something else um, it's honestly a situation that is very likely never to happen, uh, but it's always nice to have it around. And uh, just to look at the, the, the cost of, of this thing again, it's like five, five, five six, seven dollars uh, for the adapter, another five bucks for the float, and maybe another ten dollars for that strobe siren. So again, very low cost, uh, lower than, than the, uh, the solenoid drip line you know, like 15 bucks or so and uh, $20 and, and you've got yourself a uh, solution which is going to work uh, specifically for your needs in this sump, uh, in, in whatever situation you're in. You can actually hook up uh, multiple float switches to the same siren alarm if you wanted to. Uh, I could hook one up to every one of my tanks and if any one of my tanks got too high, uh, it could kick off that same siren alarm uh, because all this needs is power to get to it somehow. It doesn't care how it gets there. So it could be one float switch, it could be five or six. As long as all of those wires lead to this strobe siren uh, and one of those goes off, uh, it'll work. So anyways guys, those are the two projects that are coming up. Sorry I don't have anything physical to show you yet. The parts, like I said, are on the way. Uh, but by next week we will have two DIY videos completed. And uh, this is just a quick look at the diagrams for those. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.